Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now after failing to find an RTX 3060 on launch day, the whole experience left a bit of a sour taste. The truth is, a friend of mine was hoping I could find them a car to use as part of a gaming PC build I was putting together for them. The 3060 seemed like a perfect choice. Not to be dissuaded from finding something on a similar budget, I began searching for something else until a quick check at 1am the same evening led me to this. Inside this box should be a B-grade RTX 2060 Super. It cost me £300 or £309 after shipping and considering RTX 2060 Supers have an average selling price of £499 on eBay right now, I'd say it was a bargain. In this video we're going to be unboxing the card and testing it, but in my next video I want to talk in more detail about the used and refurbished markets and how you can find decent deals like this in the current hardware climate. Today though, let's start with what we actually got for our money. Out comes the monetization friendly knife once again. So there are a few marks on the card as expected from a refurbished item but overall it's very clean and dust free. We don't know the history of this card but I suspect it's likely a customer return. It comes with a 90 day warranty. The RTX 2060 Super from what I've seen in recent reviews holds up quite competitively to the new 3060 so I think for the price and given the current state of the market this was a decent find. It was certainly cheaper than any other RTX card be it 2060 Super or just standard 2060 that I can find anywhere right now. Now I was a little worried when the PC didn't fire up after installing the card but then I realised that I had made one of the most basic and amateur errors out there forgetting to switch the power supply back on. The driver is installed without a hitch and there is no artifacting on screen so the 2060S is working as it should and this is always the point at which I breathe a sigh of relief. If you are buying a refurbished or used card from well anywhere really be sure to install the relevant graphics drivers and test a game or two before leaving any feedback. Use it for a couple of weeks before leaving feedback in fact. Because speaking from experience, I've owned GPUs that have worked fine under low load, yet caused significant problems like artifacting under high load gaming situations. When it comes to testing any secondhand GPU you buy, then I'd also recommend not changing the thermal paste right away, even if this is something that you do plan to do. Always test the card first, even if it's filthy and covered in dust. Test before tampering. If you take it apart to clean it before you've tested it, then you fire it up and find that it's broken or not working, as it should be, you can't be sure if this was the case before you tried it or you broke it. See, it's hard to tell in that case. This can lead to headaches for both you and the seller or the company you bought the secondhand hardware from. And I've certainly dealt with one of these issues before. I took a card apart. It didn't work when I tested it. And I never asked for a refund because 
I wasn't sure if it was me that broke it. Even with the who knows how old thermal paste still under the heatsink here then, the RTX 2060 Super isn't getting too hot or loud, yet. I had the Gigabyte Windforce 2070 Super once upon a time, and despite also staying within a fair temperature range, that thing got so noisy. I'd find it hard to recommend that card because of the noise levels, but this one is already a little less offensive to my ears. The 2060 Super is a capable 1440p card in some instances, yet better suited to 1080p in others. If like me you still game primarily at 1080p, then it's going to give you no trouble in most cases with high settings enabled. Probably not the best thing to say though, as we move on to Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is, in my opinion, best played here with ray tracing off. The extra effects are nice, but the effect on frame rate isn't. With the high preset at 1080p and DLSS off, we were seeing 74 FPS with a decent 1% low, though as reflected by that 0.1% figure, there were a couple of little drops here and there. Now I didn't really notice these, so it may have been during the transition from driving to walking. Sometimes the game stutters when getting off a motorbike for example, but because it happens during the animation, it's harder to see. For the most part though, the game runs fine, aside from the standard glitches and whatnot, but that can't be helped by any graphics card unfortunately. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I spent a bit of time running around Fornberg here. Norway tends to be more demanding than England from what I've seen. Maybe it's the snow. This then represents a more sort of worst case scenario, but it still performs well at high settings. I'd consider tweaking a few more of the demanding options and maybe bumping a few things down to medium to ensure a constant 60 plus FPS average if that's the target you're after. Now I don't want to spend too much time on this video because it's sort of bittersweet for me. On one hand I think it shows that there are still some bargains to be had out there, but on the other hand it seems silly to review something that is still going to be quite hard to find, at least at a reasonable price in most cases. Asking the question, is a 2060 Super still good in 2021, doesn't really seem to make much sense either because it is. I guess we can look at this as more of a sort of refurbished graphics card test, at least this thing seems to be working as it should, and it sort of helps my case of recommending secondhand parts. Finally then, let's check out Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. This is where the card got the warmest and loudest of all the tests. After checking performance out here I can safely say that this isn't as loud as the identical looking 2070 Super, but it is noticeable now, and probably not for anyone who is concerned with noise while gaming. It is however working as it should be, which is good, so it looks like we've got a fairly good deal here. As I mentioned before I'll make a video about finding cheap hardware at some point, and talk about how to find good deals and cards at reasonable prices in the current climate. As for this one then, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did, leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.